Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Fanatics turn to... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another game here in Group A. We are taking a look at the teams that are struggling. Infamous currently sitting, uh, I believe it's two and four. Yep, two, two and, and four, four in the group. Fnatic, O oh, and six. It's the battle to not be eliminated before the main event even begins, and it is well underway here in Group A. I think for Fnatic, it, they actually faced the uh, top three teams yesterday. Mm -hmm. It was LGD... Uh, actually, let me just have the actual team. Uh, Liquid, as well as TNC. So definitely, like two, three, two to three of the strongest teams in the group. Yeah, three of the top four. Like EG is the the last tough team, right? So, for Fnatic, I think today begins their meteor rise to you know, not being the last spot. It would surprise me greatly that that this team will get the the knockout. I think this team's too good for that. Do you think, how do you rank them overall, like, compared to the other C teams? Do you think they're stronger than, like, TNC, or...? Oh, no, TNC is definitely number one by definitely far. Definitely number one. Okay. Um, Fnatic, I would say... They're definitely better than Execration, so... Okay. Yeah. All right, well, draft's underway. Let's talk a little bit about the picks and the bans. Nightstalker first overall for Infamous here. And Fnatic replying quickly with the Clockwork... Venno combo. The bands are very different from what we've been seeing. Bloodseeker removed first phase. Viper also taken out by Fnatic along with a silencer. So super targeted ban. <laughs> by Infamous, they've only won one. Yeah, the, the Blood Seeker is actually a very powerful tool for Fnatic because they play it in both in their 1 and 2 position. Uh, QO plays it much more aggressively with the Radiance build, whereas Ajit from their safe lane plays it much more reserved. So this is, if you guys never watch Fnatic play, this is a QO team through and through. Take you back to the MVP Phoenix day where it's like, we live by QO, we die, we die by QO. We run at them, we constantly fight. Exactly. It's still the same philosophy of Dota as MVP Phoenix. And then they, they basically lane for about 10 to 12 minutes and then they group up. And then they just play for that stage of the game. So you see item purchases just for that stage of the game. Don't be surprised if this is a core Veno where he doesn't go for the standard Veil into Axe that you see most other core Venos go for. Uh, you might see things like Drums and Force Staff instead because you're grouping up so much earlier, you're playing for that phase of the game. And Witch Doctor, by far, is their best support pick for DJ. And and it's so good because it gives you control, so it helps QO dive. And it also gives you sustain for the group up. And not many other support heroes give you both. And Witch Doctor is probably the complete package for that. Interesting. I, Witch Doctor seems like a bit of a Southeast Asia staple. Obviously, RR pl plays it almost every game as well. Yep. So DJ, very good here. And uh, I think... I think Deben is probably for C. They don't play as much, but that's just Deben, you know. Some of that North American influence, perhaps. Uh, Infamous grab the samurai, add to their cause. The Juggernaut is picked up now, so a good solution for the Venomancer with all his magic damage. Same for the Clock with his pesky battery salt cogs combo, and uh, potentially even the Maledic damage as well. So. Jug seems like a pretty safe carry pick this game. Yep. I and the other other lanes, like the most important lane, you, you look for the matchup is the mid matchup. Mm -hmm. um, the two games that Fnatic has lost in a C qualifier is the two times that QO has lost the lane. One time to uh, Cuckoo and TNC, and then the other time to Mushi. So. It is the utmost importance for QO to win his lane, and that's why you see Fnatic Febby just go into the mid lane, no matter what hero is playing, to give them that advantage. And it looks like it's going to be, I believe, Ursa is going to be the QO hero here. That is certainly something we saw a lot of last year, and good matchup against the Juggernaut. Uh, obviously doesn't care about his Blade Fury, has the Enrage in case he Omni Slashes. Gives them the Roche taking potential with the Veno. So there's some obvious like pluses here. I still don't think they have a great building hitter. 
Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, Kiel never, or sorry, Fnatic never draft any building hitters. Yeah, so it's all Their about Their philosophy is we're going to kill you and then we're going to worry about the buildings later. Now, of course, you, you can put the Ursa in the safe lane if, let's say, there's a bad matchup or a bad hero. And then you put the Veno as a fourth position. Go back for the Kiel pick. That might actually be the case. We'll see. It's a good Batrider game, though. Barely any control for him. I guess the Veno is a bit annoying, but outside of that, could make Ursa's life a living hell. And it is that Batrider Night Stalker combo that we talked about. So Infamous get their hands on that. The pride of South America. You can see Fnatic did ban out all the mobile carries, the anti-mage, the, the Weaver. The hard to catch, right? Because yes. the way the Fnatic draft, they don't really draft some hard lockdown. It's about just getting picks and getting quick kills. And yeah, we... ideally defenseless targets. Yes, like that Rubik, man, juicy. Mm. Oh yeah, but he's he's probably the main one. The rest all they've got two flying characters and a juggernaut. So I think otherwise they're relatively covered. So Legion removed by Infamous. Fnatic likely looking for that additional setup here. So we're expecting what? The QO mid Ursa, the safe lane Benno, uh, and then an off laner for Ohio besides the clockwork. Right. Uh, if they see something that is really good against the Ursa, let's say the Quap, then they might go for something else. I, I think Ursa now gets shifted to the safe lane. And Venno support. Yes, and then you pick up something for QO. Ember Spirit is a go-to. Pretty good against Quap. Uh, you could fly, fly and get a ton of kills against Batrider and things like that. Of course, the PA special. He is the PA special. He is the PA. Yeah. Period. <laughs> a lot of time to think about this final pick. For example, you know, the Bloodseeker first ban looks a little bit odd, right? But if you kind of put it in the context of this draft, it would be amazing here. Just having a, a mid lane advantage matchup against Quap. And we're going to see Shadow Fiend. This is not the QO hero that I've expected coming into this tournament. Well, I guess he's getting a Shadow Blade or a Yule Scepter. You know, something that can fuel that aggression. Okay. <laughs> and it's going to be the offlane Venom Master. Uh -huh. Fabian the Clockwork. Yeah, it's not too often we see the support Venom nowadays just because it's, you know, just wants to sit in the jungle and not do anything. So yeah. I suppose this fits better as far as keeping that higher tempo. But yeah, the Clockwork Shadow Fiend combo rears its ugly head again. Queen of Pain probably won't be too happy. But we'll have to see. Overall thoughts on the draft here, Lumi, as it comes to an end. Who are you favoring? Is this Fnatic enough for your liking? Will they be able to run Roughshot over Infamous? So I casted a lot of the, the games for Fnatic in the C qualifiers. Every time I feel like, oh, they have the worst draft because it just doesn't come together or it doesn't scale that well. Mm -hmm. They just say, look, we don't play conventional Dota. We are just going to win or lose in the 10, 15 minutes. And if you look at it in, in that context, yeah, sure, you got some great vision in the mid and late game. You got some great scaling hero in Juggernaut and Queen of Pain. All of that that might just doesn't matter. So I'm going to just go with what I know. I, I know that Fnatic's going to run at you and they're very successful at that. They have the heroes. Uh, it seems like they got what they wanted. And I also think that Fnatic is the better team despite having their 06 record. So I'm going to go with Fnatic here. A big day for Fnatic. As you mentioned, they faced most of the toughest teams already. And would certainly love to start today with a W. Let's see if they can pull it off. They need to work here on the Cogs. Nice and early. Although they missed the first opportunity. Not sure what was going on there. But trying to salvage this. Ranked. Some souls for the SF early. Definitely not the most practiced team on this combo, I guess. Earlier today, we saw Hellraisers. Before we even loaded into the game, Shadowfiend had three souls already. Now they're slowly working towards it. Like I mentioned in that particular game, teams are getting smart about, you know, we're, we're going to get that early smoke gank, we're going to run at you. Oh, Benjaz could be in trouble here. As he did. Oh, never mind. It's actually Ohio in trouble now. <laughs> Squirming his way back towards safety. 
He thought he had the opening. He got the gal on the jug before the spin DJ. came out. But now DJ getting run down. Infamous have the numbers advantage. Fnatic picking a fight while three of their heroes are busy back at the well getting souls for the Shadow Fiend. So they don't get as many souls as they would have liked. Normally 12 is 12 to 15 is ideally what you want. Okay, he's going to get that next three. So he's at 12. Uh, could have been 15, and they give up the first blood, and they're probably they're going to lose this bounty room. Yeah, as well. they're going to try to run up a contested. Matthew, sitting in the front line, Cogs should be very annoying this fight. Pretty decent Cogs here, and now they're going to focus on Excel on the right side. They even get the rune here. Kuo picks it up. Is he going to grab the first blood? Looking for it. Oh, Ajit, get with the program. This is the QO nation. Brother, brother, <laughs> brother bear, please. <laughs> yeah, brother bear indeed. It's going to be Veno on the safe lane. All right, salvaged. Fnatic, definitely salvaged. Still got the 12 souls. The creep block's not the best here mid, but they do get the first blood. Yep. Or uh, not the first blood, the response to the first blood. So as far as the other lanes go, you know, it's easy to focus on that Clockwork Shadow Fiend. But we do have the tri lane bottom for Infamous. Pretty decent kill potential with these three when Benjess has mana. Is it Benjaz or Benhaz? Benhaz? I'm not. I mean, the South American J, right? It's an H now. Is it? Okay. Don't they go ja 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 in, in their pubs? Clockwork? Or rather, I DJ? Mute, I mute F1 of my Cogs out, and now Ajit going for the kill. Ajit doesn't have boots, so it looks like he won't be able to run Excel down. And so far, the tri lane not working out here for Fnatic as they lose the Witch stuff. So they're going to bring in a full tri lane as Febby was starting off in the mid. But now makes his way down. So, they'll have the 3v3. Shadowfiend already got the love early. QO, trying to get those last hits in. Overall, looking at these lanes, the, the one last lane is the Batrider top up against the Venomancer. Ohio still no points in the wards, but I imagine we'll be seeing those soon. Do you like either team's laning setup better? I think like Infamous is more. Uh, it's less risk. Queen of Pain is doing fine against QO despite the cogs. Batrider trading farm against Venom is fine because I think Batrider gives the team a little bit more. As I say that, big skirmish breaking out and it's all likely to go down here. Ajit is tanking some power shots though on the way out, but there is no more Blade Fury. Oh, and you can turn around here, okay. give him the clap. Give him some claws too. QO getting soloed. Oh dear. Yeah. Like I mentioned earlier during the draft, this is how they lost some of the games in the qualifiers and likely how they lost some of the games yesterday. Just He got the help from the clock early. He got the souls before he entered the lane. And Tomato still manages to outplay him and find the solo kill. Out of the top tier like mid laners uh, in the international, I would rank QO not very highly uh, in terms of his like lane mechanics. And for a player that depends so much on snowballing, like this is definitely one of the aspects of the game that he needs to uh, get better at, and I think. Queen Tekka, the the lovely cousin of King Tekka, finding a, a solo kill here top. Does ultimately pay with his life to Mr. Ohio, but still a win for him. Bottom lane. Continuous action breaking out. Remember, it's daytime. Infamous will certainly have a little more firepower to work with in about a minute. For now, Fnatic are forcing them back. This hurts the pain off so far. Tomato is threatening to go in again on QO. He might find another solo kill. Bleak, nope. Tries to counterplay with the fairy fire. It's not going to matter. Tomato salving up. He will eventually die. Two kills for him. Yeah, it doesn't matter that. Solo. Yeah, it doesn't matter he got the trade. It's just double solo kill, like you said. And the lane is completely won. Now, Fnatic is in a position where they have to 2v1 mid. And even that, like, Shadow Fiend is going to be hurting in terms of experience and, and level gain. Like, compared to the Shadow Fiend that we saw earlier uh, yeah, from look, Hellraiser. Like, what Kaiser got done was absolute domination. Now, it wasn't against the Co-op, to be fair, and he had help, but nonetheless. Yeah. It, QO does not seem comfortable. I mean, he didn't have Jerax running in with Nyx Assassin backstabbing him every two seconds, right? The same that time is here. true. So, I, I think Kaiser is doing more. Cool. He's hardly even winning the CS battle. We've seen Shadow Fiends with like 30 CS. And... Uh oh, here comes uh, Tomato. That's another kill. Just another solo. Tomato says, I'll, I'll take the trip home. Or not, you know. We're good. DJ, casking it up. Now the Maledict, but just a quick turn, a quick scream. Right oh. Ooh. 
think you should just fight him. He, he's dead anyways. Deny? Oh. A little bit, a little bit short. Bit on Have you looked at Tomato's skill build, by the way? Yeah, he's leveling up the Shadow Strike. Level yeah, man. Three now. Maybe that's what's giving QO the, the D? Grimis continues to just it? brawl with Fnatic everywhere they turn. Eight to six already at five minutes in. Continuing to pull ahead and really that's just Fnatic getting completely crushed so far. Excel coming in, but the angry bear is going to clap him a couple of times. Throw the void out, try to kite him. The creeps are there as well. Creeps. They've got a spin available. The Ursa maybe tries to man up. He wants the Rubik. No, now he oh. wants to run. The Rubik blocking him slightly. <laughs> that kills for me, sir. Thank you very much. Herself. We needed the, the Benny Hill thing. music like right there. It's just three heroes running in next to five creeps and one Ursa trying to survive. No, this early game has not gone well at all. It is only five minutes in and we have 15 kills. That is Fnatic Dota for you. Yeah, but it's not like the Fnatic pushing the tempo, right? It's all infamous. And so now they're looking for more. They're going to again dive QO. Poor bastard on the middle lane, eats oh, the quad bolt, down he goes, now lift DJ up, toss him back, give him the old shadow strike, and that will out damage this heal, it looks like with auto attacks combining, another scream, another kill, Tomato keeps the ball rolling, it's only a level one blink though, so He'll Febby die. finally will get some vengeance for the squad as he answers back, but... I mean, I don't know that Shadow Fiend could have had a worse start. Let me 0 and 4. Yeah, there is like few sadder things than Shadow Fiend's lane right now. Like Shinder's list is up there, <laughs> um, but you know it's pretty close second here for Kyo. He does get a return kill. All right, he's on the board. Ohio gonna go down. Meanwhile, yeah, good solo kill. Was that a solo kill? Did he get help? No, yeah, we had a. It was like Night kind Stalker. of an after the fact. Night Stalker came by, celebrated the victory. All right. And he's gonna sleeting it. Only 12 to 9. Not an overwhelming advantage for all the crazy action there's been. But again, QO being shut down. It's more worse than the deficit if they just don't have a functional Shadow Fiend. They really just need to park someone mid and help this poor guy. Still jerking okay, around. Okay, he almost, got the kill. Almost ran. Do we do restoration? If he didn't run into the cogs, he might have been able to kill him with ah, the second he's void. Fine. But QO is gonna live now. Matthew applauding himself for <laughs> crashing into the cogs and ensuring his demise. And now immediate smoke by Fnatic. Circus really came into town today, Lumi. 12 to 10. Seven minutes, three kills a minute. Are we not done yet? We're going to see a couple more kills. Ohio coming forward. He's got the three-point wards. Are we going to see one? There you go, Excel. In a lot of trouble. That's going to be the one kill. I tries imagine to get away, might. but not happening. Achit eats his way and quickly deals with him. But meanwhile, guess who's dead mid again? QO is not welcome in this middle lane. He dies on the enemy hill. That is a very aggressive position for a guy who's already died four times. Yeah, I think it's time to just duck in the jungle a little bit. And, uh, you know, don't show up for a while. Let his team to play. Kind of four protect one. Let them do the push. Let them create space for you. And farm away. Uh, TPs this time to the shrine. Yeah. To the jungle. Don't even show up. Uh, still wants to come to the lane. Man, the lane's like hot lava right now for Kira. Don't go there. <laughs> Mono is ult again. He's got an arcane rune. He's ready to go. Yeah. What, what do you think about this queen build? Like, it looks like something out of a NA pub. And I think it's great for just shitting on your lane, which is exactly what Tomato wants And to tilting do, right? your opponent. It's like, why why am I losing to this max? I Shadow think it's done build. its job. Like, QO yeah. has been completely do dominated in the middle lane, forced back to the jungle. That's that's the plan, right? You have, I mean, but you have another carry. You know, you have a Batrider who's having a good time. Already Blake picked up, by the way, as Queen Tekka quietly farms that. So they're on track to to have follow-up kills, and it's not like Queen has to do all the heavy lifting and AoE damage later on. I mean, the Bill always wins his lane because that's what it's for. You max dagger to win the lane. But the problem is, even if you win the lane, the scaling becomes an issue for Queen of Pain. Right? Like, you, you don't farm as fast. You don't kill nearly as well in teamfights. That's true. So we'll see how, how will Tomato do moving forward. Yeah, four, four points is a big commitment.
two or three even would have been. I think three is kind of already overdoing it, you know. Yeah. I, was... I cannot I cannot argue with the result. They've killed Shadow Fiend five times, so you know, end of the day I think it's accomplished. I mean, how much of that is QO and how much of that is the build? <laughs> I think a fair amount is QO. But perhaps the build put QO on tilt, you know? Like yeah. you like you mentioned the initial The psychoanalysis here coming out at TI seven. Don't worry, Lumi has his degree. Unfortunately, his degree is in, in memes, not in psychology. Dank memes. Dank memes. We, we've been uh, enjoying the three kills a minute, but it's it's slowing down. Down to 2.4. What a slow and pedestrian state this game has taken. Venna looks like he is going to be going for the standard veil. Has it queued up. I guess Veil makes a lot of sense, especially if you consider it. QO! He's asking for it! There's an Arcane Rune! Double Shadow Strike <laughs> Special coming at you, buddy! Oh, man. Look at the cooldown. 2.8 seconds. Oh, mama. Blink away. Oh, does have to blink soon. Tomato. Yeah. Oh, he turned around. I think he might get poisoned down. He needs to make it to the shrine! Touch him! Touch, touch the, the healing shrine. goodness! Okay. Oh, he's gonna live. That's like when you had a very hot summer day and you just get to the fridge, it's like, oh. QO's Shadow Fiend is feeling like what happens when you leave like a kid or an animal in a car on a hot summer <laughs> day. It's like this, is, this guy has like been turned into goo at this oh, point. Oh no, they're walking up a hill here. They had the smoke, but I'm not sure how much of that is going to protect. The casket's going to fly around. DJ, very tanky thanks to his voodoo restoration. Excel might be the first one to drop here. No shrine to be activated, but they are teleporting in. Chug Hawk. coming, has the Omni, lets it go. Spin to follow up, trying to dish out that extra bit of damage. Runs down Febby. Queen of Pain now joining the fight, but Tomato doesn't have the ult. Lobs in the Shadow Strike, QO, lending a bit of assistance. Oh, what a oh. almost get pushed yeah, up onto the high ground. Tomato says, I'm salving up, can I kill QO? No? Okay. <laughs> Pack to farm. <laughs> Stop, guys, he's already dead. All right, if QO can come back and be a force in this game, I think that is the type of thing that can inspire a lot of confidence in the team. Like, you cannot really ask for a worse start. So if he somehow manages to be an impact player and they go on to take this game, Lumi, I think that does... That's almost better than just having a good start and winning the game, you know? It does wonders for your confidence. I, I guess. And he's a very emotional player. It's truly a trial and, and tribulation. I'm right? trying like, to find the silver lining, like, because, <laughs> you know, because they're having such a bad start. I mean, at the, the end of the day... The potential for turnaround positive energy is that much higher, but the potential to just continue feeding is also quite high, as infamous swarm into the woods, lasso him, Avoid him, pop him like a pinata. Down he goes again. Well, your statement still stays true, right? Like, he could come back still from this, and it'll still be great. Yeah, the struggle continues. Yes. <laughs> the struggle really I mean, two lanes heavily won by Infamous. Queen Tekka dominated his lane, got a solo kill on a Venomancer, which is very impressive. Mid lane was obviously a complete swamping, and QO just got outplayed heavily by Tomato. Even that bottom lane was basically a break even, so it was a heavy win in the laning stage, and from there, Infamous have just continued to convert. Where is that comeback gonna come from for Fnatic? They wanna try to make their move on Queen Tekka. They are gonna lock him down here, manage to hit him with the nuke from Ohio. The slow is enough to secure the kill, which Doctor doing his best to keep the push going. So? Clockwork Hook is going to be there. He's going to have to lift them out, but QO in position. Here we go, boys. Back in the game. Treads back in the game. <laughs> Such a strong statement. Look, strong. He's I'm, like, even with the Night Stalkers net worth. I'm trying to give him some of my energy. People, raise your hands. Everybody knew skill. Even if you're an infamous fan, you know, give him some of your energy because, goddamn, this is ugly. There's no mercy energy. You have to earn it. That's true. Mid bottom lane. Benya's getting called out, perhaps, but he'll be fine for now. Blade Fury comes through, but it's after the Gale, so he gets controlled. A cell TP's in. Now going for the steal. He just pops down a Plague Ward, peppered by that Death Ward. Will finish him off. Wards, wards everywhere. QO down again, okay. death number seven. But the rest of the fight working out quite nicely. The Queen of Pain came a bit late, and Tomato never found the opening. A triple kill for Ajit. Infamous 
some signs of overconfidence, perhaps. Yeah, they blinked. TPing one by one into a tower where Fnatic had set up shop with five. The Batrider blinked right on top of the Shadow Blade, or Shadow Fiend, excuse me, as he was letting loose the Requiem. And then he's like, oh my god, it got blown up. And then, yes, the Shadow Fiend did die to the Omni Slash, but at the same time, the Omni Slash ended, so the Death Requiem also did a number on the Juggernaut. Tomato does find a nice little courier snipe here. Still a gold lead for Infamous after all that struggle. But not the amazing lead it once was. Also, Infamous took a 5v4, right? Because I don't think Queen was there at all. Had Queen been there with Veil and, and Sonic Wave, I think that would have been a different fight. So, like you said, Infamous getting a little bit overconfident, fighting a, you know, 4v5, teleporting one by one. And the net worth lead, despite having such an overwhelming laning advantage, is only down to 1,000. Lumi, you talked a lot about how Fnatic likes to play. Yep. Uh, how they want to run at people. It's all about QO. That obviously has not happened. Right. So, does the game plan change now? Do they try to take a different approach? And if not, you know, how do they salvage it? I think the uh, the, the game plan has to change. I think QO now has to pl take a backseat. The best. Kind of uh, going forward, it's going to be Ajit. He needs to get big. And I think Venno also really allowed him to fight under tower. Matthew is going to get caught. Got the Maledic and the Death Ward. He will definitely be dead. Ajit hopefully could claim the kill. Ohio picks it up just as good. Meanwhile, Queen Tech is going to TP oh, out. Oh, the hook up finds him. Debbie coming in clutch. And with the clap follow up, the Firefly ending Fnatic make it a two for nothing advantage there so a good pickoff for them now tomato gonna try and salvage things turn his attention towards mid he is almost level 14 so that crazy build you know just a few minutes later it's largely as though it never happened yeah i, I think like Back he might have he might have died an extra time because he had a lower level of blink oh now, oh not again yeah, gonna get killed probably Follow-up Shadow Strike with the Veil. I think it could be denied. Oh, 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 he really uh, wanted it. Tomato, too cocky, my friend. Too cocky. Was that a blink towards him to watch you die as I TP out? I think he thought QO might be getting denied by a teammate. So he wanted to but he him. blinked in to TP out. If you're going to blink in to do something. No, I think he blinked in. He was going to kill him. And then he's like, oh, shit, this is a terrible idea. Let me TP out. You oh. think it was a taunt blink? I this is South American Dota, dude. I mean, don't that, put it out there. That is, that is, it's possible it was a taunt blink. He also dropped his whole combo and then veiled. I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe he just forgot. Yeah. That that definitely would have netted him the kill. That was probably the biggest error there. Yeah. But uh, I really think that QO should not be going for a Shadow Blade. I, I think the Shadow Blade snowball build. The ship has left the, the port. Like it's too late for this build to actually. It's like it's been to four different ports of call in the meanwhile. Yeah. And I, I think his role now, you know, you're talking about wh what QO should be doing. His job now is to get a Dragon Lance at hit buildings. Because if you look at the rest of the team, Ajit is not going to be good at hitting building. Venno's not going to push anything fast. It's up to the Shadow Fiend. And Shadow Fiend, I guess uh, the Shadow Blade helps, but I think Hurricane Pike is where you want to be at. Especially surviving against things like Matthew and then Ben Haas running at you. QO is never one to shy away from a little uh, extra aggression, Lumi, so... But Shadow Blade fits the bill. And the, the player's style and personality, even if it is arguably not the best item for what the team truly needs right now. That's the age-old Dota question. What does a hero truly need? Teleport scrolls. I think some good cosmetics. <laughs> cosmetics. Yeah. yeah that's all right, Ajit into the pit, but immediately detected. It's a really good Roche lineup, but Infamous are really good at contesting Roche, right? They have the Batrider and the Night Stalker duo, so... I wonder if this is given up freely. Darkness is available. Roche is going to kill this off in about three, four seconds. It is so you know, hard to come in, though. Ohio's has already laid down a minefield of... ...ports. Yep, Ajit picks it up. Meanwhile, Kyo going to get caught. Nothing new here. Yeah, it actually took Tomato down though with the help of the Febby hook shot. So while the Roshan was happening, Tomato was going again for a solo play, again feeling it and getting confident, but overconfident indeed. He's trying for too many solo plays, not really working with the team, and yeah. 
Fnatic have been good about backing him up and responding uh, to that aggression against QO. Simultaneously, we have Infamous taking down a, a deep tier 2, so that's pretty decent. But Fnatic now gearing up to start laying siege on buildings. But Benhaz is in the base! Matthew's hitting a tier 2 top. Fnatic needs to take care of uh, some, some trouble at home. Let's see if they get the tier 1, then go back. Are they still sticking around? They're not porting it. Thinking about it. Ah, oh, that's the Fnatic way, right? Kill heroes, not good. Okay. But Juggernaut is there, like you said, with the healing ward just freely hitting the buildings. The healing ward does get killed off. Matthew's still hitting the tier 2. That's just a free one. They just gave up two tier 2s and tier 3 damage for tier 1. Look, I'm not a relationship expert, but when you travel a lot, you gotta go home and take care of the lady sometimes, you know? You just just can't be out there and going wild. Hitting towers, going wild. Yeah. Life lessons with Lumi. How to stay happily married and play lots of Dota. Happily married, what an oxymoron. <laughs> That's a jaded comment there. All right, well, uh, unhappily caught here by a lasso is Ohio. Capitated and finished off. Pick off for the jug as they chase forward. Matthew trying to flap away. Febby came in with the hook, but not super effective against the Night Stalk of the Requiem. Could be, though. It's a beauty on two. Finally, finally, QO has a big impact in a team fight with the help of his friends. And with that, a celebratory talent now is for the taking. Infamous taking some very questionable fights, right? Something that you mentioned during the draft is that they have the sight advantage with the Batrider and, and the Night Stalker, so that they should be able to select pretty much any fight that's favorable to them. And also, they have picked up a gem on the, uh, the Rubik. So, I don't know where he passed it on to. Looks like it's on the courier back now. So they should have the map advantage moving forward as well. But despite of that, it's Fnatic making the game relatively close. Pipe is now secured for Team Fnatic for Ohio, so their ability to withstand the, the punishment put out by the Quaff Bale and the Batrider improves pretty substantially. So the Ocel might get caught out here, and that's going to be more good news for Fnatic if they can lock him down. Febby, trying to line up that hook shot. He's he got should. the gem. He scores, but he will pay with his own life and turn all the bodies hitting the floor in simultaneous rhythm as Ajit charges in, continues to claw away at the Quap, tries to finish her off, can't quite do it. Tomato, we know this man likes to brawl. He might just be coming back in. Matthew, he's going home. And all the while, we do still see our juggernaut friend pushing this bottom lane, working on the tier three now. Infamous starting to rat it up more and more as the game goes on. And it's working. Fnatic are not really making that a priority to come home. Now the TP out with the Blade Fury. No basher on Ursa. And of course, no hook shot up on Febby. So an easy escape for him once again. Very clutch rescue in the top of the river. Excel had the gem. Batrider was able to blink him, pick it up immediately, and just flew the hell out of there. If you give the gem to Fnatic now, then they will wrestle back map control very easily. And if, meanwhile, if Infamous have it, there's really just... There's, there's the rocket and there's the ward, so there's like some forms of vision for Fnatic, but yep. not reliable. I'm somewhat surprised by the skill build that the Rubik has went for. You're up against the Venomancer, normally you want to max that uh, no feel. QO, well they have the detection for him, so he's stuck here for good, but they don't have the lasso. Looks like they won't need it. Shadowfiend goes down once again. Rubik managing to steal the raids. Just the, the short raise though, not very not very useful. Otto is playing aggressive here. He gets hit, caught out by the basher, freshly picked up by Ajit. A nice little ambush late. And that is probably like death number four for Tomato, where it's a very avoidable death. They're not even trying to gank him. He just overplays his hand, tries to make an individual standout maneuver, and ends up costing his team. He is just either tilting or just way too cocky. Well, he, I let's think say at that first it was cocky, and now I'm starting to feel like it might be tilted. Let's just say that he stood out regardless with the plays that he's making. And to be fair, he probably didn't expect the basher, but I mean, still. 
He stuck around bottom for a while, slowly chipped down the Ursa, then tried to go for the kill. Four heroes off the map. And, well, Fnatic continued to function, so... Net worth now even. Yeah, what actually, actually, QO now ahead of that Queen of Pain. What, what, like you said, what a roller coaster of emotion this game has been <laughs> for, for both of the mid players. And QO sticking with this build, Shadowblade moving Smokes, forward. Crossing paths in the night. Ohio gets off a good poison over to start it. Drops the bail as well. That forces them on their heels, and now the chase is on. Ohio diving behind the tower. But they don't want to commit any further. Ten heroes engaging in the smoke, and nobody dies. Lasso on the Venom Master. They're going to Omni Slash him as well. They take him down. Talk about a hate party. They do not like poison. That is for damn sure. Queen Woo! of Pain all layered in over the top, but great defense. Valiantly holding on to their tier two. Now looking for more. That's how you play with your team. Tomato blinks forward, and Ajit also going down. And just like that, Infamous pull the five man wipe out of the hat. Tomato right back on top in net worth, and they surge down the middle lane. That was such a beautiful sonic wave and a cog. Find it up. The alley oop from Febby. And Tomato slams it in. Well, we have seen some signs of life from South American Dota. You know, first it was unknown back at the Frankfurt Major, then it was SG Esports representing um, at the more recent Major. Yep. And perhaps Infamous can carry on the legacy. Already got two games under their belt, and with a win here, starting to move towards the middle of the group. Definitely a substantial lead at this point. Fnatic very much on the back foot. Trying to find their way back in. Speaking of Unknown, Excel was a member of Unknown, the, the first team that went to an international land. So you... Few, though, in a little trouble. As he I gets... call it a lot of trouble. <laughs> yeah. Goes down. Roshan could be spawning relatively soon. Speaking of international experience, uh, one of the players to me that is very hot and cold is the drafter King Tekka or Queen Tekka. I've, in the, some of the, the lands that he goes to, I've seen him go like, you know, 9 and 1. I also see him go 0 and 9. So, very, very hot and cold. So far in the TI, doing pretty decently. And in this game in particular, doing very, very, very well. Playing some good bat rider. Yeah, he really crushed the lane. I think that was probably the most impressive thing out of King Tech of this game was. Nope, Courier. Is that Radiant? Yes. Also, rumor has it the originator of the for what meme is is uh, King Tekka. Oh, really? Yeah. I think Arteezy saw it in in his pub and then uh, propagated it. Okay. For what? <laughs> Here we go. Big smoke initiation now as King Tekka leads the charge. Goes for the lasso. Tries to find that Ursa, lock him down, control him. The Quad Bolt committed, it actually hits three who all ran into it, but still, the Ursa stays alive. Silent stuff still can't be finished. Woo! Still is the unhit, the rage, but meanwhile, the stolen Requiem turns it around. Fnatic on their heels because of it, perhaps, but no QO with the BKB. Tries to hang on, it's all up to Ajit, but Kaiden controlled. Who's the real man Wait, now? Bash. bash number one, bash, bash number two. two. Are you kidding bash me? Oh, uh, three doesn't need it. I think he could have just ran and let the poison do the work. Ajit rescues the gem. TP's home. He's gonna make it. No, he made it home, but he died. But he got the gem home, and that's the most important thing. <laughs> what a crazy roller coaster! Queen of Pain gets the ultra kill, but the damage has been done. At what cost? The gem is. Oh, that's like the payload being delivered. <laughs> Nine heroes dead in that fight. Man, but Excel being able to steal that Rec Room, I don't... They would have gotten run over yeah. if it wasn't for that. That was huge. Is he looking for the gem somewhere? It's like, where the hell is this thing? <laughs> oh. Even though this game is clowny as hell, and it's like, you know, everybody's making a ton of mistakes. It's so fun to watch. I love this game. This is the best kind of Dota. Forget about that polished, you know, well orchestrated. Yeah, we saw OG play. Efficient machine. That wasn't entertaining. Let's be real, guys. They farmed for 20 minutes. 
It was entertaining in the same way it's entertaining, like, I don't know, watch, like, a fly's wings be ripped off of it. You know, like, it's just, it's just brutal. This is war! This is battle! This is the kind of Dota that we want. Alright, Roche is happening here, and last time we saw Fnatic pretty easily just waltz in and take it. Infamous! Want to take it for themselves, I'm not sure whether they can. They don't do it very quickly, and they just blinked into a pit. Healing War committed! Can Ohio just snipe it with a play core? You're gonna try, Fnatic gearing up for a big fight around the pit. Looking for the opening, the Roche about half HP. They're gonna snare up that Night Sucker, try to control him, but again, the Bear gets caught, another good call, both Tomato delivering, Omni comes through, Bear's been slain, and now it's on to QO, but with the BKB, he tries to rein in the damage force, a cell away, the Stolen Requiem. It's used again, and well, QO trying to find that extra kill as Matthew Gets controlled, heads up to the high ground, but the buyback is there to cut him off at the Fly pass. Away. DJ can't catch this. Laps and flies as best he can, but it's back into the pit for Infamous. They go for round two. Uh -oh. Fnatic wants to brawl again. They get up the middle. That two stolen stolen! A cell out of his mind with the drive by. What a savage this man is. But, but they will lose Aegis for will sure. Will be enough? Tomato? Tomato? Blinks Maybe in. not. Blinks in. Aegis snatched. He got the kill, but he got the cheese. Extra life. He got the cheese. He could blink back out. Full HP now, and he's gonna go for the fight. Matthew going for Febby. Can he make the pull it out? One more void. He needs it. He's not gonna get it. Tomato again playing with fire right now. Not even done just yet. This Queen of Pain being hounded. The Silence comes in. They re-engage on the Witch Doctor. Kiting around QO. Trying to toy with him. And Tomato will muscle him down. Now they can come back in. QO is taking too much damage. He's shrine. being overwhelmed. But he does have the Shrine. The control is there. At least for now. QO so low. Tomato not going to force it any further. Matthew though. He's hunting. I don't, can he really get Forces the Forces a BKB regardless. Oh, looks like he's going to trade his life or, or not. Or is he? Yeah, yeah yes. okay. <laughs> got the bash. Woo! 38 to 35 over two kills per minute. Madness with me. Absolute madness. I, I don't know if people are recently joining us. This game started with QO going like 0 and 4. Just got oh, apps. 0 and 6. 0 and 6. Or I think 1 got and 6 or something. Got solo killed twice by Tomato. Tomato maxed Shadow Strike. Was absolutely wrecking him. Then Tomato went on a feeding spree, died four times <laughs> on his own to try and make this game interesting. And oh, now, it is interesting. And now right. both teams are playing for keeps. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the International. Fnatic is 0-6 right now, so <laughs> emotions are high or low depending how you look at it. This game is still anybody's game. Aegis, I mean Aegis and Cheese both got used in, in, in that last engagement, so nobody getting any kind of lasting advantage moving forward. Queen we, of Pain did get the we, last just had a, we had about 20 kills in the last well, four minutes, right? It was like two, essentially both teams got wiped. Yeah. Twice. <laughs> Here we go, big smoke, but there to break it, perhaps is infamous, or perhaps just there to feed as they get controlled and burst down. Gem hits the deck. Is that the second gem they just lost, or, or was that a recover gem? I think it's the same gem, recover. Okay. Uh, that hot potato gem. No, 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 they got two gems now on the dire side. All right, well, DJ's got one. Some hidden bounties for Fnatic. That's huge. They just bought the gem. Excel is down, what, 1,600 gold, 1,800 gold from the two gems that his teammates are unable to hold. That's a 3,200 gold score. Yeah, and now Fnatic going up the high ground. Meanwhile, look at them backdoor from Tomato. He's going up the high ground too. Glyph is going to get forced out. Forcing out that Glyph. Now Fnatic. Laying into the tower, they're committed as a squad of five. A bit of a split from Infamous, but they do have the advantage here. Working on the melee, Rubik tries to stall, dropping the Plague Wards throughout the Fateful, does what he can, but Fnatic will draw first blood here. Actually, almost identical timing. Now Infamous keep it going, they're gonna rotate on mid. Fnatic are still just they going have to for come back. tracks. They have to go home, but they're not doing it, they're gonna sacrifice the Rubik, but it's worth it if they win this fight. Ajit is there with the BKB, going to work. He is able to force them on their heels. Just the bear alone drives them back, but now Fnatic could be exposed on their own retreat. Queen Tekka jumping in, has the lasso ready. The blink is available, needs to find that opening to re-engage. The gem could be reclaimed, but no, the zoning opportunity here with the Deathlord. Well, it's going to be one gem down, it looks like, so they'll salvage something there. 
A Febby. one for one Rax exchange, but not done yet. And under your hats, folks, as Febby hooks to the creeps. No TP. It's a long journey, and Tomato is willing to take the plunge with Febby. Febby would rather not have a friend on this ride, but hello, buddy. How do you like them tomatoes, he says. Jumps onto him, locks him down. Should be finishing him off. And Infamous get another kill. They reclaim their gem. They trade Rax evenly while two heroes are dead. And they have to be very happy with that particular turn of events. Yeah, really, really smart play by... I think a lot of teams would have panicked in this situation and be like, oh my god, we need to defend. But instead of defending, push the mid lane in and then riding the mid creeps, going to the bottom. That's uh, that split pushing that Benhaz was able to do earlier, paying in a uh, huge... Now Infamous... The fact that they have the tier 2 still up also made it such that Fnatic couldn't actually make the same play. Like, you know, going to mid and, and take down tier 3 instead they just had to go back. And now it is about those shrines with both teams having lost the tier 3. So, it looks like Infamous is going to draw the first blood as far as that goes. They now rotate on mid. An item you wanted to see much earlier, Lumi. Finally now coming out. QO grabs the Hurricane Pike. Hey, do you think the Shadow Blade has done much so far in this game? No. Because, well, I mean, part of it is infamous, you know, buying two gems, so. Well, maybe they wouldn't have bought them as early if you didn't have one, right? Right, so. yeah. Maybe it's done something, but I haven't really felt the effect, you know. It, normally you see a Shadow Blade going off and, and just getting picks repeatedly, but he, he just got it so late. I don't think it's really accomplished its goal. It did not let him farm more freely. It has not set up for big team fights. Like he's had a couple good requiems, but those were all set up at the clockwork, right? right. Not, not by QO himself. Um, and he, he's not. It's not a game where you really want to build the silver edge. So the upgrade path isn't particularly there. I guess it could be all right in theory against Queen of Pain, but in practice, she is difficult to reliably get that right click on. I like to see Infamous not fighting till the Queen of Pain hits 25. She's very, very close. But Fnatic might force that engagement. Streaming in. Ohio looking to get there first. And they oh, he forced that man! One. No! They are going to catch him out. A cell down for the count. So they, they had the right idea. They want to force staff him, him out, but Rubik went for a spell steal, and Matthew used the, the force staff right then and there. So he just got pushed in. All right, we're going to need some base defense. Queen of Pain, again, not 25 yet. She's porting back, though. No buyback on the Rubik for a minute. He's been huge in these last fights, dealing things like Poison Nova. But the BKB comes out, locking down the Venom to controlling him, slams it home with a huge quad bolt. Now working on QO, forcing him on his heels. He BKBs, he drops the Requiem. It might be too late, though, that Queen of Pain's controlled. She's pushed back by the Cogs. They do finish her off. No buyback on Tomato. Make a kill streak down. Now they tap the Shrine. But Infamous are lacking their heavy cannons at this point. The damage really isn't there. It's just the Juggernaut with no Omni Slash you can hit. They're going to be on the ropes to try and hold this second lane of Rax. Fnatic, desperate for a win, storming back into the game, keeping it alive with it. Perhaps their hopes of making it out of the groups, too. Working on Queen Tekka, forcing back Fenhaz, but really just mainly focused on the melee, which they might get soon. There's a Silence of QO, looking for that missed chance. He's not missing too much here or there. Uh, as I say that, misses a couple more, but still gets the melee down. So now they have the Rax advantage. Tekka. They want Queen Tech as well. The play court, not quite enough. Staying alive. QO2, incredibly low. Shreds of HP here, there, everywhere. Will anyone ever go down this game? Finally, QO falls. The chase is on. Juggernaut on pursuit. The Requiem comes as Matthew finds QO in the trees, trying to TP out, isolates and finishes him. Now Febby being dealt with. The battery assault, well, tries to cog away the Night Stalker, but he's already trapped within. The comeback may be there. There are buybacks ready on Fnatic, though, so infamous. Need these kills, and then they have to do something off of it. The hook won't get him back to safety. Three fall in the end. Roche could respawn momentarily. But it is starting to feel like a now or never type situation for Infamous. Now there is buy three buybacks available on the side of Fnatic. Uh, the only person that doesn't have back is the Venomancer. And instead of pushing mid here, we're going to see Infamous shoving the top lane as, uh, in as well. Bottom creeps streaming in for, for the dire side. Something that Infamous needs to take care of sooner rather than later. Shadow Fiend buyback forced. Could be a good time to fight while he's waiting to get those souls back. You think it's time to go back here for, for Infamous, take care of that bottom wave, and, and fight a Roche instead? I don't think that's I don't think that's the South American way, Lumi. All right. I think it's fight now if you're Infamous. Viva Peru! The call, but it's 
tough to break into this base. Right, Vivo, go home. Let's go, let's go home. This is not. <laughs> Bottom lane is pushing. I mean, Roach this, could be up. This game's had everything. We got Age of Snatches. We got a base race. We got gems being passed like you hot can, potato. You can feel the adrenaline pumping, coursing through their veins. You could write a an, an Emmy award-winning movie, like just off the emotions of this game. You get on the case on this one. Roshan response. Here we go. Scan comes through. Is gonna detect. Fnatic lurking on the high ground. Shouldn't be a surprise for Infamous. Will they find the opening BKP. Lasso, they will bring down the Venoman to drag him to the low ground. Can they burst him? Quapult, the whole kitchen sink, throw directly at that nasty snake, and they get the kill. However, in turn, Matthew's gonna die. He's got the buyback. Rec room stolen. Tomato fighting from the low ground. He does get hooked. He could be controlled here. He blinks out towards safety. Acel revving up his own. Requiem gets it off too. And Febby now in danger, about to go down. Duo's BKB is finished. They can circle around, focus on him. They try to do exactly that, but first, Rajit in the way. He's finished off. Now moving on to DJ. It's all collapsing for Fnatic. Four are dead. Zero have buyback. Make it five. Infamous have pulled it back. Applause everywhere. <laughs> and Chat now the going victory off. parade down mid. Oh my goodness. Well played by Infamous. Again, Excel making the huge plays, adding the damage the team lacks. That Requiem not only doing a bunch of damage, but also cutting out the damage output of Fnatic. And I just think they got out muscle. The buyback's not going to be there. And GG is called. Oh, and seven. Fnatic have to be completely shook after this game. They are already halfway, essentially, through their group stage, and they have yet to get a single W. Yeah, man. Like an 8.9 earthquake went off in their hotel room. Shook is <laughs> not enough. You come to Seattle as a C representative, and you just get. I mean, you face very strong teams in day one, but Infamous is definitely somebody that they should be able to beat. But Infamous, let's not take anything away from them. They play I mean, really well. Matthew play well. Excel play well. A little sloppy, but when they when they took fights, they really took them with a lot of panache. I have to say, very yeah. impressive. So Infamous, the the pride of Peru. They take another win here. They're up to three now and very much in the hunt for the middle of the group, maybe to sneak into that fourth spot heading towards the playoffs for the International. We'll be back for game two as Fnatic still search for that first win.